protection that protects you from the influence of the shaitan. When you have iman, you protect yourself from the shaitan. And one of the strongest, one of the strongest aspects of the iman, <coughs> as iman is different levels and different aspects, one of the strongest weapons and aspects of iman against the shaitan is this knowledge. Knowledge is one, str one strong tool and instrument against the shaitan. The more you know what Allah wants from you, the more you understand the path of the shaitan and the less that you fall into it. And that's why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always encouraged us to seek knowledge so we could protect ourselves from falling into the path of the shaitan. The a very well and common saying of Abdullah ibn Abbas, what does he say? He says, it's a lot more easier for the shaitan to influence 1,000 worshippers than influencing one scholar. Why? Because the scholar is very well equipped of knowledge. He knows the path of the shaitan. And when we learn in gatherings like that, it's important that we do know the path of the shaitan. We know what the shaitan is calling for. So we could prevent ourselves from falling into it. Because if we didn't know, then there's a big chance that we fall into it. But when I'm aware of the path of the shaitan, then I become a lot more aware than falling into the path of the shaitan. And that's why you hear of common lessons like this, where it's always been brought up to learn the tricks of the shaitan. Remember my brothers and sisters, that the maximum shaitan can have on you, the maximum he can do is whisper. He doesn't have more than that. The maximum that shaitan can do is whisper in your ear and try and influence you to do the wrong thing. But can shaitan actually force you to do something that you don't want to do? No, he can't. Because if he can force you to do something that you don't want to do, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not judge you over something that you're forced to. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not judge my nation over anything that are being forced to do. So if you are forced to do something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to judge you over something that you're forced to do. The maximum shaitan can do is whisper. Like how I'll come up to you and say to you, go and do this and go and do that. More than that, he can't. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran al-Kareem, min sharri al-waswasi al-khannas. The one that whispers and runs. Khannas means the one that whispers, puts those thoughts in your mind and then flees away, runs away. Why? Because he knows he's not doing the right thing. So he just throws that seed of a thought. It's only a seed of a little thought and he lets it plant in your mind. This is the maximum shaitan can do. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran al-Kareem, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ In the heat after, after everyone enters the hellfire and everyone is in the hellfire, the shaitan will be abused by everyone in the hellfire, saying to him, it's because of you were in the hellfire. We could have been in the paradise with the believers. We could have been in the paradise with the prophets and the messengers. But it's you that made us end up in this miserable place. So everyone will be abusing the shaitan and putting the blame on the shaitan. So Allah says in the, he in the hereafter, while the shaitan is in the hellfire, what does he do? The hadith says he'll stand, he'll stand on a pole in the middle of the hellfire and calls upon everyone in the hellfire. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ And the shaitan, this is a verse in Surah Ibrahim, and the shaitan will say after the matter has been decided on and finalized, Allah had promised you the truth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled His promise to you. What Allah had promised, He fulfilled it. And I promised you and fulfilled nothing to you. I promised you and fulfilled nothing to you. Then He says, وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي This is the point I want to get to. Then what does he say after that? He says, 
I had no authority over you except I called you and you followed. What does it say? I had no authority over you. I did not have this authority to control you. I did not have this authority to enforce an action upon you that you don't want. All I did is, I called you to do something and you did it. So what are you blaming me for? Why are you putting all this blame on me? I did not force you to do an action. All I told you is, do this evil deed. And you knew who I am. And you knew the action that I told you to do. And you knew if you're going to do this action, you're going to end up in this hellfire. So what are you blaming me for?